figure it out. Figure it out. You need to figure it out. Figure it out, man. Figure it out. Figure it out. Figure it out. All right. Figure it out. Just figure it out. The love of God. Figure it out. And welcome to the FIO Podcast. I am your host, Mason Kleiss. And if you haven't figured it out by now, you need to figure it out. It's been such a good week so far. Vikings huge win over the Cowboys. We got a lot to get into today. I have my good friend on, lifelong friend, Smash Bros pro player, former, two-time former fantasy football champion, Dominic Cisneros. How we doing, Dom? I'm doing good, Mason. Thank you. Love the intro. Get all my facts right. I like that fact check. Hey, I got to You know, I, I didn't feel like roasting you too hard today. Uh, I will say I'm a better Smash Bros player, so I won't. I won't get give you too much credit. Allegedly. Allegedly. But you beat me in fantasy this past week, so I can't. I, I can't be too my, salty. So. My last two players are both Cowboys players too. So. <laughs> you're, I enjoyed that. you're just out here, you know. Dude. I'm See, literally always just out here. I literally thought I had a chance because I had Emmanuel Sanders left and oh, the other receiver. Tyler Lockett. Tyler Lockett, of course. Uh, he gets hurt and and uh, cool. Amanda Sanders got hurt. So Emmanuel left like in the second quarter. He, got, he left early in the rip injury. Yeah, I, I was pretty confident. They, they both needed to score like 30 points or something like that for me to win. I, I was gonna, I'm not going to lie to you. I was nervous going into that game. I was like, I was looking both at uh, both their past games, and Emmanuel was putting up big numbers. Exactly. Tyler, Lock- Tyler Lockett was the man who was scaring me the most right there. Yeah, Tyler Lockett was putting up. You know, he's like the top five fantasy receiver this year. Like, yeah. I knew, I knew taking him when he was going to be good. I just, I didn't think he was going to be this good. Um, but he is still kind of up and down. I think he's only ranked that high because he's had a couple forty point games like out of nowhere. Yeah. But still, yeah. it's, he's putting up numbers. But. Um, no, yeah, and you had Dak and Zeke were your last two players, and I shut down Zeke too. I was worried, and I was watching the game obviously, and I was like, "Yeah, we're shutting Zeke down. We're, I might beat Dom. Like Dom might not be doing good." Then at the end, because I didn't check fantasy like, the whole game, and then after the game was over, I check and I'm like, "Damn, I forgot Dak Prescott threw freaking three touchdowns." <laughs> I got nervous at the end there. He threw that last uh, hail mary interception i was like oh those two points i come back to bite me Ooh, <laughs> and then you beat me by like 20 so it didn't fucking matter yeah 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 oh well yo you know what i'm drinking out of right now what my captain america glass i got from goodwill for two dollars not even i think it was a dollar Ooh. whatever it takes right dude you gotta do whatever it takes so Dom and I go back very, very long. Uh, I don't even know, like freaking kindergarten, el- I think. kindergarten, elementary school. Yeah, those days, always been boys. Um, and what, oh, what was I? What, what were, what were we called in elementary school? We had a little, well, gr- we had a little group. Oh, well, the crew? Huh? Dude, the crew? Yeah, the Yoshi gang. One bro. and only, one and only crew out there, the Yoshi boys. <laughs> the Yoshi boys. Now we're the ass boys. Hey, we had to grow up eventually, you know? The Naples degenerates growing up. What are you going to do? You can't stop time. Might as well just embrace it, you know? Now we're going to get into some great shit this this week. You know, obviously, we're going to talk about Miles Garrett. That's the biggest thing. We're going to talk about uh, Kaepernick, all this good stuff coming up. Week 11 previews. Uh, I know Pokemon Sword and Shield came out. I know we're both excited. Big crap. I got Shield earlier today, like probably a couple hours ago. Haven't put, taken it out of the box yet. I will immediately play all night once we're done with this podcast, uh, and it'll be great. And you are going to have the floor and tell us what your first thoughts were about it in a little bit. Um, but I want to get into the Miles Garrett thing first. That's that's it's the first thing we got to get into. I want to like it's it's the biggest topic Not going too. on. It's not only the biggest topic in sports going on right now, but it's the biggest topic in just in general. You know when it's showing up on NBC and, and CNN, it's it's a big deal. The NFL does not like to see their games no, played no, on no. those. <laughs> they put it put a big black eye on the entire NFL right there. For sure. Um so if anyone's living under a rock and doesn't know what's going on, Miles Garrett uh, ripped off Steelers quarterback Mason Rudolph's helmet last night in the 21-7 victory in the last eight seconds of the game and uh, 
beat him in the head with it, hit him, swung and hit him in the head with it. Uh, thankfully, it wasn't the crown of the helmet, and Mason didn't get hurt. Um, but you can't do that. <laughs> no, no, not at all. And, and uh, you also got to look at the fact that Mason Rudolph, earlier in the season, had a horrible hit on his head earlier. That's what no one's talking about. Like, all these big, like yeah, Stephen A. Smith, no one's talking like about that. Weeks. Yeah. Like major concussion after that hit, and then it, he goes off, and then Miles Garrett smashes him on his head with mm-hmm. his own helmet. Yeah. Yeah, the thing that was made to protect him is is what was hitting him. <laughs> now, yeah, three weeks. No one's talking about it. Three weeks ago, he suffered a hit from Earl Thomas in the Ravens game, had to, uh, helmet to helmet con- con- uh, contact, and knocked him out of the game. He had to take his face mask off. Like it was a huge deal. Oh, yeah. Everyone was like prayers for Mason and all this stuff, uh, and and rightfully so. It was a vicious hit, and not that I think Earl did it on purpose. You know, it's it's the nature of the game, but. No one's talking about that. It's like that guy just suffered a major head injury not too long ago, and then yep. he does this. Now, I will say, I, I'm not going to say Mason's the victim here. I don't like how he's playing the victim card. I will say that Miles Garrett was obviously in the in the most wrong person here. Yeah, I, I believe uh, if he wouldn't have done what he did, uh, I feel like there have been – no flags on that play it would have just been a little altercation the rest would have settled it down a little bit but he just took it to that next level that the nfl and most of us just don't want to see in a football game yeah just it just it's a terrible look like you were saying it's a it's a bad look for the nfl bad look for miles garrett bad look for the browns it's just i don't know i don't know why people like when i was watching that i did not find any enjoyment out of that i was i was sitting in bed i was honestly tired it was the end of the game i was about to fall asleep and then all of a sudden I see Mason Rudolph. The thing that caught my attention wasn't him throwing his helmet at him or swinging the helmet. It was when he hit him late, the very first, the thing that yep. started the whole thing. He t- the w- the ref blew the whistle. A couple seconds later, Miles Garrett takes his full weight of his body, full 280 pounds of him, and drops him to the ground. And, of course, you're going to be pissed. My- Mason Rudolph had the worst game of his career through oh, four yeah, picks. Yeah. Through, through four picks. Against the Browns. Angry. Yeah. So you're going to be a little short tempered. He wanted he wanted Miles Garrett off him, so he was like pushing at his helmet. He almost got Miles Garrett's helmet off. So yeah, like obviously that's why I say like it's weird because Mason Rudolph is the one that started the helmet thing, yeah. taking off helmets, and then Miles Garrett was like, "All right, you're gonna I'm gonna you're gonna start it, start that. I'm gonna finish it, even though he's the one that started it from the late yeah. hit. That's what that was the first initial penalty that nobody's talking about was a late hit." And that's what got him mad. So that's what instigates the whole thing. So Mason Rudolph definitely is not should isn't the victim here. I don't like you know in his post game interview he said I'm not going to yeah. back down from any bullies. You know that it's a yeah, bad look. Yeah. It's a bad look. You know it's so he handled it kind of wrong. Miles Garrett handled it completely wrong. I personally believe Rudolph should have been fined at least like a ten thousand little dollar fine. I don't think you should be touching the helmet of another player like that. Yeah. And, I mean, he, everyone's talking that he kicked him in the groin. I mean, it's at that point, because he, he not only dropped him to the ground, but he wouldn't get off of him. So, yeah. it's like, get off of me, man. He's just pissed, like, flailing his body about. And, ugh. I, I had a friend there at the game. And he was on the show a few weeks ago, Nick DeFranco. And he called me after the game because, I guess, where he was, he, like, nobody at the stadium knew what was going on because, obviously, they can't see, you know, what's, yeah. what's all transpiring. So he calls me, and he's like, what just happened? You need to tell me what happened. And I had to explain to him the whole situation, and he was like, oh, shit, that's bad. And then he he ends up taking a look at it, and then he texts me today, and he said, Mason Rudolph deserved every bit of it. Um, oh, I don't know if he deserved every bit of it, but... No, of course. Everyone in Ohio, the only people that are butthurt about this are people fr- from Ohio that are Cleveland Brown fans. Yeah. Like, they're all saying, yeah, Miles Garrett was out of line and he deserved it, but they're saying that Mason Rudolph started it and instigated it. He may have started the helmet grabbing, but he didn't, like, the late hit is what started it. Yeah, they both couldn't yeah. control their tempers, but <sighs> did you watch it's First still... Take? Did you watch First Take this morning? No, I, I missed it. Um, oh, wait. Stephen A was on was on America's side, you know, saying Miles Garrett was in the wrong here and all this stuff. Yeah. Max Kellerman was hardcore defending Miles Garrett. Like it was weird. Um that's why I don't know if the show is like they make you make you disagree they, with each other. I feel like for that they they'd have to because if 
they're both agreeing on a lot of things all the time, then it wouldn't be a good discussion type show. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I'd don't. i rather have the truth because I thought they were both going to agree, and Max Cohen was like, yeah. basically everything that I was saying before, that, that Mason Rudolph was the one that first started to pull all the helmet off, uh, you know, kicked him in the groin a couple of times. It, I feel like it would have been better. Like, I'm not saying this is, like, a good solution or anything. He should have done this. But, like, if he would have ripped his helmet off, he should have thrown some punches, not smack him in the head with his helmet. Yeah, I, I, like you Something said like, like you said earlier, he, if he rips the helmet off, he doesn't get suspended. Nothing. Yeah. He'll get a fine, but that's it. He'll rip the helmet off because, obviously, Mason did try and take his helmet off. Like, yeah. went after him, like, grabbed Mace, or, uh, Miles Garrett's helmet. Uh, but So if he rips it off, it's like, okay, fair game. But then... He while getting hit while getting pushed back by two of Steeler offensive linemen gets hit in the head and then not even talk about Mason or Miles uh, Garrett then no Ogan Joby or whatever his name is comes out of nowhere and just lays out Mason Rudolph pushes him to the ground yeah. and that's all fine and dandy but then in his post game interview they asked him about the fight and all he could talk about was I'm going to defend my my brother who's Miles Garrett I've known him for three years he's my brother all this shit I was like okay. That's fine too, but if you look at it, the 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 time when when he pushes Mason Rudolph to the ground, when Joby does, Miles Garrett is getting the shit kicked out of him by Marquise Pouncey. <laughs> Why yeah. don't you go over there and help him? You say you're his brother. Go. Marquise f- Pouncey last night was a real one defending the quarterback. Yeah, he big was, time. He was laying out some big punches too, and he started kicking him, Miles Garrett, right in his helmet too. Yeah, that's what like. When I, I, I almost missed the helmet. Like, I saw the helmet thing, and I literally screamed him a vet. I was like, oh, shit. And then I saw Marquise uh, Pouncey kicking him, and I was like, oh, this is getting out of hand. And so yeah. much laundry on the field and whatnot. Um, but, no, I, I think I think what Open Joby did was, was almost as Bush League as, as what Miles Garrett did. Yeah. Just because he's – not only not only did he say – did he push over the quarterback who was standing there not doing anything at the time? He didn't. He this was after Miles Garrett went yep. to the ground. It's not like he, because he went after Miles Garrett once he was up. Because what are you going to do? Just stand there like a bitch? No, he's going to go yeah. after him. Um, but once Miles Garrett is on the ground getting beat by two other Steelers, he said, "Okay, I'm out. I'm done." Because I'm not yeah. going to add to this. And then uh, yeah, so what's he going to do? Open Joby pushes him over. Why doesn't Open Joby go over and pull off Pouncey off his boy? Who's, who's literally just kicking his brothers head. yeah if i'm if i'm in the browns locker room i'm calling out omajobi i'm saying where were you what are you doing why are you pushing over the quarterback what's he doing nothing he's just standing there um well, I, you're getting jumped on the other guys and you're over there just pushing down rudolph come on now i guess the main questions here are is the first question i'll ask is miles garrett officially a dirty player what do you think i think or does he get a pass? I wouldn't say he gets a pass. Uh, Bef- I'd put him in there with dirty players, but I wouldn't put him on the top tier. Like, not not Vontez Perfect yet? New <laughs> level. He's not Vontez Perfect. I feel like he's never really played dirty, but I feel he just lost his cool and just chose the wrong thing to do in that moment. See, everyone's forgetting about the first two weeks of this season. And let me enlighten you and everybody else. Right, Week later. one... Week one, they played the Titans, got the shit kicked out of them. That's when Delaney Walker was like, we knew who they were. Y'all want to crown them. Remember that? Yeah, Y'all want to yeah. crown them, and we beat the shit out of them. Week one, do you remember? He punched Delaney Walker in the face after the whistle. Like, oh. pushed him, or pu- like punched him in this face mask, and he got a, he got a, a personal foul for that. Yeah, um, yes. Week two, now, uh, he had a late hit on quarterback Trevor Simeon, Ending his uh, season. That was the end of uh, Trevor Simeon's season. Ended his season and maybe career uh, on a late hit. And then obviously week 11, what he did to Mason Rudolph. So that's a track record now in one season. Yep. So right. I think I think he classified, you know, everyone, th- including myself, I thought he was a relatively nice guy. You know, you see all the social media stuff. You see him in interviews. He says all the right things, has a million dollar smile, you know. Nice mama's boy, he says. But I think the facts speak for themselves. I think he's a dirty player. He's officially in the dirty player category. And you, you bring up Nadamik and Sue and Vontez Perfect. And I'm not saying they're not dirty players, but they have never taken a helmet off and it beat somebody with it. <laughs> you're right, you're right. 
like they they stepped on people like like Sue stepped on people that's after the whistle. I will say Vontez Perfect did everything within the whistle. You know what I mean? He did. He, he was he was a headhunter though, I'll give him that. He just cra- he just wanted to crack people. That's all he wanted to do. Like I'm and and, and can, he's the reason why Antonio Brown's so fucked up by the way. That's what I believe it. I believe it. I believe he gave Antonio Brown a bad CTE. Yes. It's finally someone that agrees with me. He gave he him CTE. After that hit, after that hit he received from Montez Burfecht, he was never the same. Thank you. Uh, and I guess the next question is, is so Miles Garrett was suspended indefinitely, uh, minimum the rest of the season and postseason. Um, is this a fair, is that a fair uh Suspension, fair punishment. Would you say? I believe it is a fair punishment. Yeah. And since it was the first one like this in the NFL, and the NFL is going to extend it in the next season as well, I think it might be four to five weeks into the next season. See, I wouldn't be surprised if it goes into the next season because there's a fine line here. Because then the NFL might have to. Because I don't know if there's like a if there's a rule in it like a bare minimum. So like, say this happened with two weeks left in the season. So would they say, okay, if you beat somebody with their helmet, it's you're done for the rest of the season. Okay, but then you have to be specific because if there's one game left, two games left, three games left, they might not give a shit. If they're out of the playoffs, they got nothing to play for. Um, They're done for the year. Or do you make it a certain amount of games? Do you make it 10 games, 12 games? I believe it should be by games just because the seasons are. Because of the fine line. So – um, if he does it, this it'd be a six game suspension. I feel like that's a little. Um, it's not enough, you know. No. I, I think twelve is a little excessive. Um, I would say eight to ten. So, yeah, two to four games next season. Let him sit out because, partly because he'll have the whole off season to think about it. I like. I don't. Did you read his statement that he that he that he released? No, I didn't. I have it right here. Um, and I quote. Last night I made a terrible mistake. I lost my cool and what I did was selfish and unacceptable. I know that we are all responsible for our actions and I can only prove to my true character through my actions moving forward. I want to apologize to Mason Rudolph, my teammates, our entire organization, our fans, and the NFL. I know I have to be accountable for what happened, learn from my mistake, and I fully intend to do so. End quote. Uh, seems like canned a canned answer, in my opinion. You know? Yeah. You know, I I don't know his IQ level. I don't know his writing abil- abilities. I'm sure he had help, but uh, just seem. I mean, what else are you supposed to say? I guess you can't not sound canned, like a canned answer. I mean, he's got he's got to apologize like that, just to like get everyone just off him for a little bit. Yeah, but, uh, I, I mean, I just wait. don't see anyone forgetting about this anytime soon. <laughs> Especially because it was on national TV. Everyone saw it. The NFL's guy think could use this as a thing, like him as an example. Like, if you like act out like that, you will miss at least like eight to ten games. Like, yeah, without a like, we are not joking around. Like, the NFL they have not, to. They do not want to be seen like this. I mean, most uh, and Max Kellerman actually. I mean, as much as I wasn't liking his points, he made a good point where he actually brought out the rule book. And there's a actually a rule in the book right now that says if you remove someone's helmet. And I don't know if he said use it as a weapon or if he said use it in a destructive way or something like that. It's um, immediate ejection and a fine or something like that. So he's like – so he's saying he should be playing next week, you know. <laughs> Come on, Max. No. You no, can't. No, After that, that I, I, I'm a little upset because um, – or I'm a little selfish because I low-key would want – Miles Garrett to play in their rematch that they have in a couple weeks. Oh, you know, that, can you that would definitely make that make it the game to watch? It would bring in so many views if he was playing. I mean, people are already going to watch it because I'm sure Mason Rudolph will still be the quarterback, yep. and there's, I mean, Obajobi will be playing. So I mean, yep, he was uh, <sighs> Pouncey won't be playing. He he has a three game suspension, which is fair. I mean, he beat the shit out of the guy, yep. <laughs> but it was in defense. Uh, another question: Do you think Mason Rudolph? Sh- you uh, you said he should have been fined, so you don't think he would he should be suspended? No, I don't think his behavior warranted a suspension. I think it warranted a fine, though. Mm-hmm. I don't think he should have been. I, I understand he was very upset that night, and it was a late hit. He landed on top of him, and he just wanted him to get off, and he wouldn't. 
And so he just went for the helmet and just started yanking on it, and that's just what made him, Miles Garrett, just start flipping out. Yeah, I think I think that he was just seeing red. Like he, uh, like that's scary. Like for you know, I know football is a violent game, and I'm yeah. and if I'm not making excuses for the guy, but I bet just shit gets over his head. You know, like they're they're just different animals. Those guys are going to war every week, every day, yeah. seventeen weeks out of the year. It just it does a, it does a number to your to your head. But I don't know. I, I, my friend Nick DeFranco that I was t- telling you about, who was at the game, uh, he. I thought that he he because he's he's one of the most reasonable Browns fans I know. I know some pretty unreasonable Browns fans. You know the ones that are like we we, we all know some unreasonable Browns fans. <laughs> yeah, it's well, nice to know a few reasonable ones out there. Yeah, like we're going to the Super Bowl, like almost as bad as Cowboys fans. But he's because because I had him on my show Wide Left that I had, um, and he and we tried to get him fired up talking about the Browns before the season, like wanted him to say Super Bowl because it was like right after they signed Od- Odell Beckham. And yeah. he was super calm, super collected. He was like, this is a team that doesn't know how to win. We have been a losing organization for a long time. We just need to win some games. So I was like, damn, that's a really responsible answer of you. That is. Um, but now uh, he's surprising me a little bit because he's, he's defending Miles, Miles Garrett a little bit. Um, he, thinks I'm, he thinks I'm just like Colin Cowherd, you know, coming after the Browns. Uh-huh. And in a way, I am. I love Colin Cowherd, except when he talks shit about the Vikings because he's very up and down about the Vikings. So I'm, I hate him for that. But it, but him versus Baker and the Browns in the city of Cleveland has been the best rivalry in sports this year. Whenever the Browns lose or do anything bad, even when they win, I am immediately looking at Colin Coward's reaction to it. You know, he's always got he's always had a lively re- lively reaction out there to the Browns. Yeah, and he he did praise Baker, and I praised Baker as well for what he had to say. He didn't he didn't give a canned answer for sure. He no. he could have easily Baker said like, he he could have easily said. Oh, I didn't see it. I'll have to look at the tape. I don't want to talk about this. You know what I mean? And nobody would have nobody would have said anything. People would have been like, "All right, whatever." But he was like, "That was totally unacceptable, inexcusable. He's gonna miss games. You know, yep. hurting our team, which is true." And I don't. I mean, I don't think Baker's gonna get any backlash from his teammates from that. No. As much as some people say he would, um, I just think. I, I don't think so. Not no. the way Baker is, and they know how Baker is now. Um, but yeah, city of Cleveland thinks Mason Rudolph should be suspended. You know, he should be suspended the rest of the year. I think at least a fine. I yeah. Let the, let, no. let the kid finish the year. This is the only year. This is the only season. He's going to be a starting quarterback in the NFL. He is a third string at best yep. out there just trying to win games. You know, their defense is what's really good. He just has to be a game manager. He's thrown four picks all year and then he throws four last night. So you could call it a fluke. He's a game manager. He's nothing, nothing super. He can't move. He's a one look guy. He's very average arm, very average talent. Um, yeah. I personally think they that the Steelers should be playing Josh Dobbs if he's healthy. I have no idea. Do you remember him, Tennessee quarterback, a few years back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got drafted think, four years ago. I saw him on the field he, or on the sidelines. He wasn't dressed. I don't know why he wouldn't be playing because he was taking a lot of preseason snaps the last few years. As the second string, so then they draft Mason Rudolph, and uh, I guess he must have beat him out in, in there are training games camp. To put him in, I'd say be this week. Just be like my or Mr. Rudolph needs a little <laughs> week off, mild concussion from that helmet. You know, he might not be on the roster though. I don't know if they're because he wasn't even dressed, so he might not be on the roster. You know, true. They must. They might have just trusted Rudolph enough to just get through the season. Plus, but even after that big hit he took in like week three or four, when yeah. He got st- like, I would have thought they would have had, like, someone else, like, just, like, be a backup. I mean, I just I just don't understand um, just everyone's thought thought process on, on defending Mason Rudolph, though. I just, I just think it's, it's, it's totally, totally off. Yeah. Just, just their overall thinking. But, I don't know, I think that, I think the NFL handled it all right for now. I think that there's going to be a lot more to it, a lot more talking about it throughout the week. People are I'm, the people are going to talk about it so much that it, it's going to get annoying to talk about, it and I'm not going to want to hear it anymore. Well, that's why we're getting on it first, right off the gates. So exactly, that. and you know that's that's. Uh, I just want to have the. I just want to play one thing for Miles, Miles uh, Garrett here. That's assault, brother. Come on, Miles. That's assault, brother. Billy Madison right now. The, 
that's the first thing I thought of when I saw that. I was like, that's assault, brother. That's all I that thought is, about. That, that's big time assault. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I think I think the league handled it good. I think Miles Garrett. I do think Miles Garrett feels bad, but it's a little too, little too late now. Um, yeah. I also don't think he's going to lose too much sleep about it because I'm sure he's a billionaire, so he'll be all right. Or a millionaire. He hasn't made that much money yet. It's hard It's hard not to lose sleep when you're in that mansion, you know? <laughs> he just did ESPN The Body, too, like not too long ago. Did you see the Browns post something on Twitter like a few weeks back? It was like, I don't know if you have You don't even have a Twitter, do you? No. It, they posted something on Twitter It said, uh, retweet and you can win a Miles Garrett signed mini helmet. Oh, you know, Jack, our boy Jack Friedman, you know, shout out to him. He actually sent that in our... Yeah, 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 yeah. So you saw it. That. Yeah. And in the top comments for like this age, like uh, fine milk, I was like, oh boy. <laughs> fine milk. I saw, yeah, someone's just like, this This didn't age well. Yeah, all that. <laughs> I'm surprised they wouldn't delete it at that point, you know? I guess it's already yeah. out there. No one, no one, I mean, you can get that helmet, but I, I don't know how much it'd be worth now. I mean, just think if Miles hit him with the crown of the helmet and like killed the guy, or not killed him, but knocked him. Even if he knocked him out, you know, he could yeah. he could literally charge him, charge like assault. He could charge him that, but he won't. He won't do that. Uh, I'm, I'm going to play the audio of uh, of what Mason Rudolph said. I I don't I don't know what the rules are. I don't know, but I know it's bush league. I know he's you know total coward move on his part. You know, I, I get. I mean, it's it's okay though. You know, I'll take it. No, I'm not going to back down from any bully out there. So we'll we'll see what happens. I don't know. Any bully? Figure it out. Figure it out, Mason Rudolph. Don't play the victim too much. You're looking like a pussy. Um, but you, I mean, you did get destroyed. So I I think he just had a really rough night. He had the worst night of his of his life probably. <laughs> yeah, After that. that it had to be. But I will say Miles Garrett is my figure it out person of the week. Uh, he can be yours too if you want. I think he's gonna be he's America's figure it out person of the week. Uh, no, I've got someone else saved for my figure it out person of the week. Ooh, all right, all right. I can't wait to hear it. Uh, uh, but yeah, he needs to figure it out, and he'll have plenty of time to figure it out because <laughs> he's done. I want to know now. I want to know who your figure it out person of the week is, unless it's something we're gonna talk about later. All right, my figure it out person of the week. For this week would be Jason Garrett. <laughs> I cannot believe this play calling the end of that Cowboys Vikings game. Vikings stopped in the run all night. Zeke couldn't do nothing all night. Nope. On nothing. the other hand, Randall Cobb, Amari Cooper were doing things all night. And they come down to that final drive to put them up. And they decide to <laughs> waste half the drive, running the ball at the middle. Give On third down. <laughs> third and third and two and lost three yards. And then they throw it to him yep. on fourth and five. <laughs> yep. If they would have out routes to Amari, little through the middle to Cobb, I think that game would have ended up differently. But I think that game came down to the coaching. I mean, in, I will say, I will say right now though, um, that was the Vikings' game plan going in was to let let Dak beat us. You know, if he's gonna, if anyone's gonna beat us, it's not gonna be Zeke. Uh, and we did a good job at stopping Zeke and. I think that's why I'm, like, people are giving Dak a lot of credit. And, yeah, he had a good game. He had a great game. Probably a top three game of his career. But he, the only reason he had that game is – it'll sound bad. But it's because the Vikings let him. You know what I mean? We were, so we, we stacked the box to stop Zeke. So it was almost one-on-one every time. And our corners have regressed big time this year. Our corners used to be our strong point. Now it's our weak point. Xavier Rhodes has not been the same. Did you say that the road is now open? The road is wide open. I am going to say this right now because I was, I was screaming this at the game at my TV by myself. I was yelling. I said, if you – I don't know who I was talking to. I was just yelling. I was like – if you have a receiver, and this is true, if you have a fucking receiver in fantasy and they're playing the Vikings, please start him because their secondary is trash right now. I'm sorry. Our sec- our secondary couldn't stop a damn nosebleed. Besides Harrison Smith, that's it. Harris, But he can't be everywhere, even though he yeah. is. He can't be everywhere. Wrong point's been stopping the run. 
running backs have been having a horrible time against the Vikings. Yeah, our year. front seven is is always going to be very, very good. You know, we have a very good front seven. Our edge rushers, Everson Griffin, Daniil Hunter, very slept on. Nobody talks about Daniil. Quiet 11, 11 sack season. Um top three in the league right now i think he can if he has a few good more games he could be one or two but i'm yep. sure nobody will talk about that uh linebackers very athletic linebackers that have played together for the for their almost their entire lives uh every, i have said ever seen griffin um eric kendricks and anthony barr both went to ucla people forget about that um and that's this this defensive unit has played together like the core of them have played together for at least six years five six years since zimmer took yeah. over um, That's key too for chemistry on the defense. Exactly, they they trust each other. Defenses need good communication. Exactly. Look at they need they do need good communication skills. I do think it did come down to coaching. I mean, I was that game could have gone either way. I was very nervous towards the end um, because we were playing very conservative defense on that last drive, just letting them letting Dak drive it down the field. Because yeah. I know that that's what that's what Zimmer does. He's like, I don't care. Let them drive down the field. Because we they play really good red zone defense, they play really good backed up against the goal line. Like within that twenty twenty five yard range of the end zone, they're very very good. That's when he starts to turn it on. I was like, why don't you just turn it on from the beginning? Why do you have to wait and make yeah. it suspenseful? Um, so, but I mean, it worked. I mean, we we played better. We used to be the best third down defense in football. Uh, some of Dak Prescott's conversions on third down that game, I will say. Off the top of my head, third I think third and fourteen, third and fifteen, third and eleven, third and eight, and third and seven. They were all long too. Yes, right. all long, and, and and it got I to the point. Went, you went to Jason Witten. I was surprised Witten was getting balls thrown exactly. that far away. Exactly. And, and and it just blew, there was a point where it was it was third and fourteen, and I was like, I had zero confidence. I was like, we're not going to be able to stop him. And there he goes, a little fifteen yard pass to Amari on the sideline or something like that. Yep. On that one drive, he had three sideline catches. I, and on all of them, I was like, no shot he caught that. They shows it in slow motion. I was like, holy shit, he caught it. I cannot believe Jason Garrett at the end of that game. Uh, the pass game was working. Everything was working. It was all looking at Dak and the receivers. And then he just does three run plays and then throws one to Zeke. And I'm just like. It was one run play. It, it was. It was, one, it was like, they were focused much on Zeke. I'm like, I know you paid the man that much money, but like, in a game like that, when they have Zeke, stopped. It was third Zeke and two. Down. He's one of the worst short da- short, short backs in the league, like short down backs, short yardage yeah. backs, I'm sorry. Um, and they w- But nobody would be saying anything if Zeke rushed it up the middle for a t- game-winning touchdown. Nobody would be saying yeah. anything because that's just him. But I will say um, if – it, I could see Garrett's play calling, what he was thinking, or if it was Kellen Moore. Nobody knows the twenty-nine-year-old offensive coordinator. Nobody yeah, knows it, who's actually calling the plays. Like that Pete Carroll, if uh, it would have worked, you know, he's a genius, but it didn't work, so he's a fool. You know? Yeah, but it's like uh, he hasn't he hasn't been rushing good all game, so maybe the defense isn't expecting it. That's probably what they're thinking in their head. Yeah, but we sniffed it out really good. Tackle for loss. And that last, oh. the throw to him on fourth and five, it wasn't a design throw to him. That's that's that, that's on Dak. Dak decided to throw it to him. He probably saw the defense lined up, and he was like, "Oh boy," he's like, "You know what? You're gonna expect this. <coughs> so I'm gonna throw it right, little uh, little pass to Zeke. See what happens." And he got instantly just taken down. Yeah, Kendricks is one of the better cover linebackers in the league. He came out of nowhere. Oh. Swatted that ball away. That's why I love our linebackers. Very athletic linebackers. Um, except when they're guarding Travis Kelsey, apparently. Travis, they can't stop him uh, a couple weeks back. You know, you know, you know, Kelsey does, does me good on my fantasy team. <laughs> I mean, he's on mine, too, in my league that I'm actually doing good in. So, that's that all that matters. Are inevitable. Dude, my, t- my team's unstoppable, man. I just... Let me let me just go over my team real quick for everybody that wants cuz cuz everyone I've had on here so far has been in my league so they don't want to fucking talk about it because they're oh, just salty. I'm just going to go over my team, our league as well, you know. My uh, team number 1 right now. Your team's out here right now. You're you're better than Brody? Brody's in first place. Is he? Yeah, I think he's in first by a little bit. Um my lineup this week isn't looking as stacked as last week because I got a couple guys on by Aaron Jones and Saquon. But let's say they're not on by. So my full team stacked would be Drew Brees, Christian McCaffrey, Saquon Barkley, Mike Evans, Cooper Cup, Travis Kelsey, Aaron Jones. I'm rocking the Niners defense right now and Matt Gay right now. Um 
I'm projected. Last week I was projected 160 points. Didn't score that many. I think I scored like 130, <laughs> but still got the dub. Scored 240 points a couple weeks back. You knew that. I showed you that. Yeah, yep. Yeah, I got that. If I don't win the league, because this is like I want to. I want. I don't care about winning our league that we're in. I do. I want to win it, but like top three gets money and like a good amount of money. So if I get top three, I won't be too mad. But in this league, it's winner takes all, and this the winner is two hundred bucks. So our league's a hundred bucks. So I'd be up a hundred bucks. So think about it. If I put all my chips or if I put all my attention onto this team, which is why it's so stacked. I've been trading. I've been going at it really hard. I'm nine and one. And so if if I win that and don't win ours, then I'm not too pissed. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I and, and currently in ours, I'm right outside of the playoffs. I've been in the playoffs, um, like the like in the playoff window all year until this week, and I'm pissed because I lost to you. So thank you for that. I'd like uh, to do a little little stat check right here. In my, <laughs> our league, I am number one right now. Okay, I thought Brody was. I, I'm up by eleven points. Me and Brody and Matt Burke are all tied at seven three, but I have the most points scored. So I feel like Matt Burke doesn't have a good team. Matt Burke's had that nice schedule. I'll give him that. I'm fucking sick of Brody though. God damn, can't deal with him and his trading. (laughs) He's his trades are just too much. He texts me too much. He hasn't done it that much this year, but last year was it was atrocious. Last year I was about to call the police or something. I'm like, boy. That's why I trolled him. That's why I trolled him and said I wasn't going to give him David Johnson back. Because <laughs> he was annoying me with the trades. That, that became a big league scandal. Um, but back to you saying Jason Garrett was your figure it out person of the week. If you want to talk about the Cowboys, I'm just going to real quick do a Vikings-Cowboys review from last week. So I think that game proved a lot of things. It showed a lot of things. It proved that Kirk can beat good teams on prime on primetime games. He can do it. It's in. It's there. Everyone knows now. That's the probably the one also, of the biggest wins of his game career. Without Adam Thielen, too. no if Thielen. If I think Thielen was in there, I think it would have been Vikings by two or three touchdowns. It would have been not as close of a game, in my opinion. Because yeah, they feed off each other. Like that's why they're the best duo in the league for a reason. They're not the best individuals. I mean, Thielen last year was a great individual receiver. Like even when because Diggs had some injuries last year, but Thielen still produced. Um, and Diggs hasn't produced without Thielen, so you can't really say one's better than the other, you know what I mean? Or Because they, yeah, yeah. they really do need each other. Diggs had a really big catch in that game. You saw on the sideline that one-handed catch, um, oh, nice catch while he was falling down, yeah. So, yeah, so it, so it proved that Kurt can beat good teams in prime time. It proved that Dalvin is clearly the best running back in football. Uh, he's better than Ezekiel Elliott, especially this year. That was like the the thing going into the game. It was like, oh, this is going to prove he's a better back, even though Dalvin had way better stats than him going into the game. Um, it proved that our or it, it did show that our our it exposed our secondary, like I was saying, secondary. It but it but it shows that we can make plays late, as of Eric Kendrick making that big play and stopping Zeke at the goal line. Um, and it also proved that I think Kyle Rudolph is a top five tight end in this net in the National Football League. Ooh, he had some good snags. Two, that two game. touchdowns. He, he he. I think he's had five or six touchdowns in the last four weeks. He's on fire. Uh, he showed up. Yeah, big time on 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 a on a stage like that. Uh, I was time. very happy Sunday with night. with him and Kirk looked good rolling out. Uh, th- there's some crazy stat that Kirk is like on fire when he rolls out to his left. So he needs to keep doing that. <laughs> For a righty quarterback, too, that's kind of weird. Kirk um, Cousins plays better when everyone's talking about him. I guess so. People talking shit, and he's like, I'm going to show up. So this Denver game coming up is a perfect trap game, so we'll see before the bye week. And then we uh, play Seattle in Seattle. Oof. That's going to be – Game of the week. That, that, calling... week. that would be the game of the week. Yeah, I'm calling it now. You heard it here first. I'm saying week 13, that's the game of the week. I'm going to say it now. But that's my Vikings Cowboys uh, review. Uh, I will now give you the floor. Uh, let's hear about Pokemon Sword and Shield. You have Sword. I want to know every not everything, obviously, because I want to play. So just give a nice little short view what you think of the game so far. I know it's got a lot of backlash uh, before it came out. Everyone was kind of talking shit about the no national yeah. decks and whatnot. Um, but I was ex- me and you were both excited to play it. Like I don't care about all that. It just looks like a fun game to play. When it, when it- comes down to it for me i've been playing pokemon since i was five years old old school i for my first pokemon game was pokemon blue my game boy color gotta catch them so all i've been through 
every Pokemon game that's ever come out. And, you know, the last couple to come out, my biggest take from them are they're just a lot easier. They baby us a little bit more. I think, uh, I don't know why it is. Maybe Nintendo thinks the kids these days can't handle a Pokemon game like the ones we were raised on. But (laughs) this new game, it's beautifully made. I like it. I like it better than the last games that came out, Sun and Moon. I think this is a better game. Well, it wasn't uh, Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu the last ones that came out, technically? Technically, I don't count those. Uh, <laughs> they're they're, uh, they're know, more like Pokemon Go. Yeah, it was, that's, that's one reason I didn't get it. It's more like Pokemon Go. I wanted to start fresh on a new Pokemon adventure. <laughs> yes. And this game, right from the get-go, for like a new fresh Pokemon adventure, they have a... Uh, Every all these new games have a gimmick now. Like it started out with X and Y was the Mega Evolution. The last games that came out, it was the Z Power. Now they got some new power that makes your Pokemon giant. Basically, that's the that's the gimmick. The Dynamax. They're they're yeah. just running out of ideas at this point. True, they are. But uh, I don't know. This game so far, I'm about I'm about to go to the first gym. It's a very nice game. What else do you want to know? I, I, want to, I want to know specifics you want to know about it. Okay, so what starters did you choose? Oh, I chose the water Pokemon. Which one's that? Uh, I think it's Salop. Salop? Can't even pronounce the name. All right, I'll pull the Pokedex right now. What did the move, what were its moves? I heard it I heard it know, knows like bubble like right off the bat, right? No. Didn't? No, I learned uh, water gun right off the bat. I was told I was told by uh, one of my coworkers today that there's like a safari zone kind of thing or like a free zone that you can just like just like a random place you can go and catch Pokemon, but it's like any level. So you could be with a level five starter and just get cracked by a yep, level forty yep, Pokemon. Yep. I was not expecting that. <laughs> uh, you go through the first thing and you go to the first town, and then after the first town, you're uh, you're in the. Uh, like the free zone or whatever? Like, yeah, like the free, it's like this new zone, and you go in there, and I saw some Onyx, and I was like, oh, dang, an Onyx, because when you go through the grass, the Pokemon kind of like peek out a little bit. Yeah, you could see what they are. Yeah, but this Onyx was just like out in the middle. I was like, all right, I'll go, I'll go mess it up. I'm like level 13, water Pokemon here. <laughs> Got my Sobble ready to go. I go in there, things level 28. I'm like, get me out of there. Get cracked. <laughs> and I couldn't escape, so it, Killed my first Pokemon. I ran and <laughs> went off. Uh, this game is like a lot like the last game where uh, there's a lot of help you get. So on your way, you don't really need to buy potions anymore because uh, every 15 minutes you're playing, there'll be someone there to heal your Pokemon to full like a Pokemon Center. Really? Yeah. Huh. Right. Tell me, it's not like them old games where you just had to figure it out yourself. You figure know? it out on your own. Yeah, these, these just like Sun and Moon too. They they kind of like make it cake for you too, like that. Oh yeah, people they, people they always healing it, them. They made that game way too easy. This one, I don't think is as baby, but it has the baby vibe to it. But you've seen like the new generation, like the wild Pokemon, whatever, like oh, the new. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm doing this run only new generation Pokemon only. Really? The first time through you're just not you're not gonna catch any old ones? Nope, no matter how much I want to. So I'm a gonna... wild Charmander walks by, you ain't catching that thing? Alright, let's be real. <laughs> wild, wild Charmander walks by, I'm instantly catching it. It's become my new starter. Okay. That's what I thought. <laughs> I think I... Me, I ain't gonna lie. Ghastly <laughs> though showed up, but uh <laughs> I, I caught it. Well, yeah, I wouldn't use a Ghastly anyway. I'm super Gengar's, hyped, though. Gengar's mean, dude. I'm super hyped to play it. I'm looking at it right now. I don't even know what these things are called, like, on the front. I think I'm going to go with Score Bunny, though, the fire type. Can't go wrong with the fire type, right? No. The, the, these are cool. There's a cool little intro to all three of them that... Makes you want to uh, choose them. Yeah, it, it, like, shows how each of them, like, kind of are. It, it was pretty, pretty cool. It was the first time starter pokemon were ever introduced the way that they were and i liked it so have you been playing all day all day i even brought my switch to work today oh i thought you were off today 
No, I had to work, but I brought my Switch to work. I got about 45 minutes of playtime at work. Okay. Are you going to... Um... You okay? I'm you. To, I'm putting you on blast right now. You said you were going to be done working there by January. Is that still true? Yes, I asked my boss today to write me a letter of recommendation. Ooh. I'm currently pursuing a job at the Conservancy of Southwest Florida. Yes. Also, f that place because they denied me three times for an internship, not a job. Uh so. I'm a little pit. I'm a little I'm salty. Going, I'm a salty I'm boy going, for them. I'm applying for two. There's ecotourism and educate or environmental education. So okay, but so that's internships then. You're you're going for the internship. Yeah. Okay. See, if you get it, I'll be pissed. Not not pissed. I'll be happy for you, obviously, but I'll be a salty boy because you're always a salty boy. Like I am you. always a salty boy. But I'll okay. I'll 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 say the quick story of what happened here. So one of the times I applied. Uh, I didn't get it, and then I, you know, got a job for the moving company that summer, and I was a, f- I was friends with the girl that worked there, and she told me the girl who got it over me was a marketing major from Maine or something like that, and I said, how the hell does a marketing major from Maine get it over a biology major from the damn area, like? I, it was environmental education. I know everything about the environment in South Florida. Like, oh, it made me so mad. I, and I remember I emailed them the next time I applied and didn't get it. I said, do you guys have something against locals that know everything about the environment there? <laughs> I was super petty. I was super petty. I'll probably never get a job there because of that. But I was – it was – I think it was right after I landed the internship at uh, the zoo in Texas, in East Texas – so I didn't care. I was like, I have something already. I'm good. Yeah. And I was like, and they they responded immediately. They're like, no, we don't discriminate. Of course. Like, uh, I forgot what their excuse was. They're like, they're like, just apply next time. I'm like, no, fuck that. I've applied like three times. I haven't gotten it. Stupid. So stupid. And I even, like, one time I was supposed to have an interview, like a phone interview, and they never called me. I think it's very poorly managed. But hey, go ahead. Go work, go work there, Dom. <laughs> Thanks, Mason. I got your <laughs> I thought you were gonna try and get a job with the Audubon Society. I do. I do enjoy bird watching and all that. But I just think or marine something getting, marine, fish and wildlife. Well, Conservancy is more marine oriented. Yeah, you need to. I, I will say in this field, you do need experience. Like yep. you need an internship. You need some volunteer hours. That's why you maybe you shouldn't quit at the sports club. Like maybe be a uh, part time. Or something, because I don't think you're going to get paid that much with the internship. Probably not. And uh, I already talked to my boss. I'm like, I'm already signed up for. Uh, I'm gonna do. I do. I run the clocks for sports club for basketball, which starts up in January. So you're I not gonna that, be done. You lied to me. Well, I'll be. I'll be done with the uh, like the main job. Those okay. Just, like, side, like I get money for it. Just your side hustle. Dude, you gotta. You gotta have a side. hustle. Dude, that's what I'm doing. I'm selling my frogs right now, man. I'm breeding, breeding dart frogs successfully and getting some eggs. I'm pretty hyped. You still got uh, the OG butters? Dude, yeah, butters. I can see her right now. She's looking at me. There we go. I love she butters. Got butters for a whole life. Shout out butters. I know she's she's been she's been great. Uh, so okay, there was your Pokemon Sword and Shield review so far. Uh, not I'm glad I'm glad you didn't spoil too much so I can get in there. I, I, I didn't want to spoil too much. For yeah, me, I'm sure. I, now, is there a way that we can play together online in this game? Yes, there is an online component to the game. Like just battling, or is it like we could be to get like play together, or how does that work? Uh, there's this thing called like camping. Uh, you can huh. like you can like visit like my camp. I guess at your camp, we got okay. there's battle stadiums. You can trade Pokemon. Hmm. Well, all we right, yeah, up. we'll definitely have to do some trades for sure. Bro. I'm kidding. We'll definitely figure it out. <laughs> good good words right there uh all right so that was the pokemon review while we're on the pokemon subject because this is this is this isn't the pokemon podcast but i just want to know for my own sanity top five starter starting pokemon for you i need to hear them right now bang out all five right now all right i'm gonna go five to one or five, five to five? one five to one five go to one number five is totodile okay oh. so are we going starters like they're pre-evolutionary form because I wrote them down as their final form. Final form, but it's you know okay. What? 
Because you don't you don't get the starter just to keep him a total dial. You get him so he can be a fur alligator. Yeah, if we're doing that, I'd still keep the same list. Okay. I'd keep the same list. For okay, sure. so keep going. Sorry to interrupt. All right. Four would be Squirtle. Two water Three. types in a row. Oh, yeah. Three, Trico. Hype. Two, Mudkip. Hype. Number one, you already know my boy Charmander. I knew it was gonna be that from your thing earlier. All right, you're you're missing you're missing some though. Uh, I don't know. If I'm you don't think it. so? Number five, we almost had the same list. I'm gonna be honest with you, we almost had the same list, but I I bumped out Totodile on my on my fifth spot. He'll, he's my honorable mention, but I will say my number five is Piplup. Turns into Empoleon. Piplup, Piplup alright. I, I I can respect the Piplup. It's a badass, badass Pokemon. Number four, Greninja. Come on, Smash Bros. The man, dark, dark, and I think he's a dark and water type. Can't beat it. Uh, number three, Sceptile. You were, you had Trico at number three as well. Yeah. And number two might surprise you. I'm going with Charizard here at number two. Uh, it was hard not to put him at number one, but my number one is Swampert because literally nothing can beat it. Tell me something that can beat a Swampert. Tell me. Sceptile. Okay. Okay, because he's a grass type. Okay, that's basically his only weakness. No, because guess what? He can learn fucking ice beam. You're done. And, bliz- and blizzard. And blizzard. So there's your counter for the only weakness he has. There's his counter. I'm not gonna lie. I played Hoenn region more than any other region for Pokemon, and they have the best starters. Set would be Surf, Earthquake, Blizzard, and some. It would always change up that last move. It would be something. I would never put Waterfall and give it two HM. Oh, hell hell no, that's an L. My Hydra. Yeah. My my level 100 Swampert that I have in the bank right now, chilling, waiting to be released out, out into the world again, has Surf, uh, I want to say Mega Punch. Surf, Mega Punch, Earthquake, and Ice Beam. Because Ice Beam hits more than Blizzard. True, true. And it has 20 PP instead of 5, so you can use it more often. Uh, so, okay, there are our top 5 starters. Let's uh, let's keep it moving now. We'll get back into the sports, back on the sports grind. Uh, real quick, last thing before we get into our Week 11 picks, the, the main thing of our show. Uh, Colin Kaepernick finally gets a workout with the NFL. Ooh, yeah. Finally, finally getting a workout this Saturday, oh, tomorrow. Got it all together. Yep, they got it. They got it all figured out. Uh, Roger Goodell set it up. I heard. I heard through the grapevine. I heard that uh, Jay Z, owner of Rock Nation, is the one that set it up. Kind of pressured him into it. What's that? Hey, hooking it up. I heard that too. Yep, because uh, he's because him signing a deal with the NFL put him gave him a lot of controversy. So he said, "It's time for you to get some controversy." So set up a workout. Uh, Eric Reed, who's been a part of, you know, Colin Kaepernick's entourage, says it seems more like a PR stunt. Um, do you think it's a PR stunt, or do you think it's legit? I don't know if it is legit. I think it is a big PR stunt, honestly. For sure. Uh, I heard, like, it's a little bit shaky with everything right now. Like, a lot of teams don't want to say that they're the ones who are interested. Oh, there's like, 11 interested. Oh, I know. Because this year, a lot of quarterbacks went down and a lot yep. of the second or third string boys. You'll hear. I'm about, I'm about to say the list, and you'll know. And all of them all of them have some quarterback trouble, except, I mean, maybe a couple that kind of confuse me a little bit. Um, but, yeah, they say he's been working out like an animal, ready for this moment his whole life. He better show up, like Stephen A. Smith said. The picture they showed of him, I don't know how old it was, but he looked kind of tubby, so I don't know if how how well he's been keeping in shape. So uh, hopefully he can figure it out. We'll see. I'm, I'm tired of hearing about him and talking about him. Uh, the 11 teams that are interested, per se, are the Patriots, so they're going to be needing a quarterback. Um, Dolphins, obviously. Broncos, no quarterback. Lions, Stafford, you know, getting – I mean, I think Stafford still has a long time yet left to play, so – yeah, and I don't. I mean, he he puts up stats, but he doesn't win games. Cardinals, which is a little weird because Kyler Murray is obviously the future for them. Um, Falcons, Matty Ice is getting old. Browns, <laughs> that should be a, sh- a shot at Baker Mayfield right there. 
Uh, the Giants, you know, they got Danny Dimes. Jets have Sam Darnold. Bucks are looking for a quarterback. Redskins looking for a quarterback. Um, so yeah, I, I think I, I'm I'm just glad I didn't see the Vikings on that list. <laughs> I think on that list, the team that would I think would most likely go for him revamp that RG three offense they used to have. The Redskins, Skins, yeah, I could see either the Skins or the or the Dolphins, man, like. Or even the Bucks, just three teams that need a quarterback right there. I think the Dolphins might go for a draft pick quarterback. Yeah, true. They might get Tua or uh, Burroughs from LSU. Seems to be the favorite yeah. right now. But it looks like Bengals are going to get them first since they're the freaking Dolphins oh. ruin their chances winning two games in a row. <laughs> the Bengals need something. Do you do you think the Bengals win a game this year? Yes or no? Funny thing, I had the Dolphins going winless because they. I wanted them to be the only team that ha- that went uh, undefeated and winless. You know what oh, I mean? Because they went yeah. nineteen seventy two Dolphins only went only perfect team in football, and then and in two thousand nineteen they'd be the first the only team that also is winless. So I, I just think that would be comedy. But now they won the last two games, which by the way I called them to beat the Colts last week. So that was a big call by me on my upset of the week. Uh the Bengals are an absolute garbage mess right now. And I will answer that question as we do our Week 11 picks. All right. So let's get right into our Week 11 picks. Uh, obviously, we missed the Browns Steelers. And I will be a man of my word. I thought the Steelers were going to win. So I'll take an L for that. I thought the Steelers were going to win pretty swimmingly, especially at home. And they've been pretty hot. I know. They won their last four games before that. Four out of five, I think, is what yep. they won. Pretty good. All right, first game, Jets at Redskins, the toilet bowl. There's always one of them every week, the toilet bowl, the one that no one's going to fucking watch and doesn't matter who wins because neither one of the teams are going to the playoffs. Uh, I'm going with the Jets because I think they're the better of the mess. So Sam Sam Darnold. Jets as well. Jameson Crowder obviously wants to play good against his old team, wants to ball out. Uh, I'm going with the Jets here, um, and you are as well. The Jets, yep. I think Le'Veon Bell on that team. They at least got a superstar on that team. Yeah, I'm hoping Le'Veon. That was a terrible keep for me. I mean, actually, it wasn't. It was between him and James Conner. So I think I James made a. Conner a lot too. He didn't. He didn't produce nothing on Thursday. Exactly. So I'm. I'm. I know he's injury prone, and I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I clipped Le'Veon, even though he has been a disappointment. Uh, Jags at Colts. Uh, this is Nick Foles' first game back. People will see if let's see if the big dick Nick energy comes back from from Philadelphia. Uh, Minshew Mania is officially on hold for now. I will say I don't think his career is over. I think it's on hold because I think he did do pretty. He was very serviceable. Uh, yeah, he, he was solid. I don't know. He was solid. But I mean, teams figured him out. That's that's what happened at the end. Yeah. Uh, that 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 game in London against the Texans was was his. Well, that that was it for him. <laughs> he was very bad. Um, so I'm going with the Colts here. This is Jacoby Brissett's back as well. So both quarterbacks coming back from an injury. Uh, it should be a, it should be a good game though. I'm going with the Colts, uh, by three. All right. Be a close game. I upset. I think the Jags are be balling out. You is this know how it, you know how it get close to that, uh, playoff time. You know how Nick Foles gets. <laughs> is this your upset of the week? <laughs> I'll go with, yeah, the Jags. I got them. That's a, See, I, I'm a little confused because I, I view the Jags and Colts as very similar teams. I don't think they're that far I, off from each other for it to be that big of an upset. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can see that, but I don't know. I think it could go either way. An upset for me is something that's like nobody's thinking they're going to win, like the Dolphins last week, the last two weeks. <laughs> you know uh, what? I got, I got an upset for you later. All right, that's good, because my upset of the week is this next game. Bills at Dolphins. I'm going with the Dolphins here. They're going to be on a three. They're on a two-game winning streak right now, because I did have them going winless. And then when they won the game two weeks ago, uh, I said, you know what? Now I don't have to feel so inclined to not pick them. So I picked them against the Colts last week, and they won. I'm picking It's a very winnable game for them against the Bills. Josh Allen has no nobody on offense to throw to. Uh, he basically just – he's a running quarterback right now. He's, he had two rushing touchdowns last week. I'm starting him in fantasy in our league. So hopefully he does well. But I'm picking the Dolphins to win. What say you? I have the Dolphins as well. Yes. I, this I, should be your upset. I don't 
I don't think it'd be enough. I don't think the Bills are playing as well as they played in the beginning of the year. Okay, but they're six and three. The Dolphins are two and seven. I mean, if you look at the way the Bills have been playing the past couple games, not very been, good. <laughs> they haven't been that five and one start they had was amazing. Fluke or four and one, whatever it was, but the past couple games have not been good for the Bills. No, definitely not. Um, next game, Cowboys at what is that? Skins? Oh, no, Lions. I'm sorry. Lions. Cowboys at Lions. Uh, I'm going with the Cowboys here. Dak Prescott looked very impressive last week. The Lions' defense is atrocious, so I think Zeke's going to come back, have a big week. Uh, Dak's going to continue having a good good, good season, um, and the Lions are holding an L. an L. You can't spell Lions without an L. That is true. I also got the Cowboys winning. Stafford's I, out, too, for the second week in a row. That team without Stafford. Stafford literally carries that team every week. It's the defense. Stafford can score 35 points. The defense doesn't score 45. I mean, it's, it's, it's half the Lions pretty good. They lose with Stafford, so they're worse with without him. So, yep. and, and what sucks is the Lions have been very competitive this year in, in a lot of games. You know, they almost beat the Chiefs, they're, almost beat the Vikings. You know, close, they had some, yeah. some very close games. Uh, yeah, Rob, exactly. Yeah, Rob. Oh, huge robbery on Monday night. God, you see, people forget. Never forget. We forget those things. They always forget the Packers. You know, the Packers get lucky and after the games. Fuck the Packers. They're on a bye week this week, but I hope they lose. <laughs> hey, they could find a way. All right. Next game. This is my game of the week. Texans Texans at Ravens. Deshaun Watson, Lamar Jackson, arguable two uh, MVP candidates. Uh, both mobile quarterbacks, both having career years. The only only guy who has more touchdown passes than Deshaun Watson is Russell Wilson, who's leading the MVP race right now. Um, it's it's going to be an amazing matchup. Uh, but I'm going to go with the Ravens here. I think Lamar Jackson's on another level. I think he's putting up Michael Vick numbers. Just he's a human highlight reel. Um, and I think the Texans' defense isn't as good as the Ravens. So I think the Ravens are the, are the better team overall. I agree. That was also my pick for game of the week. <laughs> it was a very simple pick. It, I mean, look at all the other games. The other games aren't that crazy. No, that game was the one to be watching. For sure. Both I, teams have weapons on offense. I want to see DeAndre Hopkins use more. I want to see him have one of his amazing seasons that I know he can have. I want him to show up in this game. I want to shoot out in this game. I'm on Lamar running for 200 on the ground. 200. 200. He can hit it. I mean, I believe him. He has more rushing yards than Zeke, I think. He has more rushing yards than, like... He has over 600, 600 or 700. He's, you know, he's doing pretty good. Um, Next game, Falcons at Panthers. uh, Divisional matchup here. Falcons coming off that huge win against the Saints last week. Huge upset win. I did not have them winning last week. thought Drew Brees was going to throw all over him. He sucked. Uh, but I don't think they're going to be able to ride that momentum. Uh, Devonta Freeman's out. I think they're back. Ito Smith is out as well, so they're on their third string running back. Matty Ice isn't playing that well and not getting the ball to his playmakers enough. Their defense is bad. Just keep going down the list. I can say it all day. Panthers by a billion. Christian McCaffrey's unbelievable. He's going to run for 200 yards. <laughs> My MVP candidate, Mr. Christian McCaffrey, will win this weekend. Your MVP I, candidate, huh? He is. I I believe that the uh, MVP board is more biased towards quarterbacks. I feel 100%. I feel McCaffrey does more for the Panthers than anyone else does for their team. Mm, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the, that team. most valuable. Okay, but in, in the quarterback's defense, you take Russell Wilson off that team. How good are they? Not very I good. Mean, Not very good. still pretty good. No. Defense. They, they're, they're all right. No, not as good as it used to be, but I don't know if he's. They would be awful without without him, and I think that I they. I, I don't think, think be awful. I think I that either to have an okay quarterback thrown to him. They got Kyle Allen throwing passes, so they got they got stuff to figure out. Um, I'm gonna have to disagree with you with CMC being MVP. So, can you tell me who leads the league in rushing yards? Is it Dalvin Cook? Actually, currently it's Nick Chubb. But that's only because he played last night. So before that, yes, it was Dalvin Cook. He also leads the league in touchdowns, rushing touchdowns. Christian McCaffrey has more all-purpose touchdowns by, like, one. Uh, 
but Dalvin Cook has more all-purpose yards. But CMC had a bye week, so it goes either way. I think they're both sure. unbelievable running backs. But I, I, I'm trying not to be biased here, you know. I just think Dalvin Cook is, is so shifty, he's so good. Um, so yeah, I'm going. Are you going Panthers as well? Did you say that? Yeah, yeah. I'm okay, going I'm writing them down as I go here. Uh, Saints at Bucks, another division. Same thing, NFC South divisional matchup. Uh, Saints coming off that horrible loss to the Falcons. Bucks are a dumpster fire, but they put up numbers every week. They got they got two Chris Godwin and, and Mike Evans top th- top four in the league in, in receiving yards. They both uh, have over eight hundred, I think. Yeah, Godwin's Godwin's fourth in the league, and Evans is second in the league in receiving yards. And they they have two wins or three wins, <laughs> three wins I think. Jameis gets lucky. He just chucks it up and just holds my game. He's got such good. Like great. people argue the people argue the Browns and the and the Chargers are disappointing because they have so many weapons and they're not doing shit with them. But look at the Bucks, man, because they're actually putting up the numbers. They're just not winning games. Partly their defense is so bad, and the Rams too. Look at the Rams are doing bad too. Um, but I'm going with the Saints here. Obviously, I think Drew Brees has a big bounce back game. Three touchdowns minimum uh, against the Bucks trash defense, but I think it'll be a close game because I think Jameis is going to throw the shit at the ball. Yeah, I got the Saints winning too. I think it'll be a good game. I think it'll definitely be a shootout. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. A shootout that Drew Brees would win easily. Oh yeah, without a doubt. I just love watching him play. I hope he never retires. Is uh, is Kamara playing this week? Who? Kamara. Yeah, he's playing. He's active. Yeah, yeah then Saints should win by like three or four touchdowns. Yeah, Kamara being Kamara being injured has him out of my top five this year for running backs, just because I think a good running back needs to be able to stay healthy. Yeah. So I mean, it sucks. He's great talent, but he's got to stay healthy. Uh, next, Broncos at Vikings, the trap game. You never know uh, with the Vikings. If I mean, the Broncos have a good defense. Apparently, a lot of people are picking the 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 Broncos defense to be able to hold Kirk Cousins and this offense down. Thielen's looking to make a return this game. I would say hold him off. Hold him off. Let him rest one more week, and then we got the bye week for a bigger game in Seattle. Rest Thielen. And Thielen's on two of my fantasy teams that I'm saying rest him. That's That should show how much I, I want to rest him. Dedication. Dedication. Dedicate, right? Dedicated That's fan it. here. I don't care. As long as the Vikings win, I'm good. So Broncos are starting their rookie quarterback. I have no idea what his name is because Joe Flacco doesn't want to play for this team anymore. Uh, even if Joe Flacco is in there, I don't think that they're a matchup for our defense. They have who's their best receiver, Cortland Sutton. That's an L, but I'm sure he'll find a way to get in the end zone over Xavier Rhodes for some reason. And then Xavier Rhodes will fake an injury. That whole good, that all good jazz of his. Um, I'm hoping Kirk will have a big game, a few touchdown passes, get him nice and confident before the bye week. Uh, a lot of people are saying Kirk is having a sleepy MVP year. But uh, I sh- I quickly shut that down because look at the teams that he's I mean that we're playing. Yeah, that was a big game against the Cowboys, big game against the Eagles. You know, big. He has some big wins, but the defenses have not been that good. So, yeah, yeah. But he's still I mean <laughs> he's still been on fire, especially you know he's the N- NFC Player of the Month in October. So I'm hoping he, did, he can. Did he get to go off those two or three weeks where he's throwing four touchdowns a game? Two two in a row had two four touchdown games in a row. Then I, then I, then of course, when I pick him up, he throws for no touchdowns. Yeah, I remember that. That's either here or there. You know? L. So, yeah, I'm going with the Vikings here uh, in a very easy win. What about you? I got the Vikings as well. Good boy. Broncos do not pick to beat the Vikings. Yeah, Broncos are simply not good at football. Uh, Arizona Cardinals at 49ers. This was a, a crazy matchup a couple weeks back. Came down to the wire. 49ers ended up coming with the dub. Uh, 49ers coming off a loss to the Seahawks on, what was that, Thursday Night Football last week? It was. Two Thursday Night games in a row, crazy outcomes. And overtime, that was, that was definitely. That, yeah, that, I mean, I, I, when Wilson threw that interception late, I said, that's, that, there goes his MVP right there. The, it's gone. Because that's, that's as quick as it takes. But then obviously they get the ball back. He, Wilson lucked out that game big time. I also, still Wilson's think. MVP was saved by a kicker. They picked up off the street to kick a, a game-winning field goal, goal. Oh, in overtime in an NFL game. I mean, the guy put him in put him in overtime. He, he kicked the game-tying field goal to push him to overtime, but he couldn't. The moment was too big there for him at the end because Robbie Gold was hurt. But uh, yeah, I'm going 49ers here. I think 
Cardinals are a fun team to watch, but I think the 49ers are just way more sound defensively. Yeah, I got the Niners as well. I think Cardinals offense, they'll probably get going a little bit, but I think that 49ers defense, I don't think the way that the Niners playing now compared to how they played when they first played, I think that defense is a lot more locked down now, tighter. Hey, Bosa I, just runs in there and just caught mayhem for quarterbacks. I will say I'm not afraid. As a Vikings fan, I'm not afraid of the 49ers. I, I, fear, I do not fear them. I think we could beat them because I do not think they're even the best team in the NFC. I think – I would put the nod at the Seahawks, Saints, Packers level, you know, those those teams. And I'd, I'll throw the Vikings in there for the like top three, four teams in the NFC. I mean, obviously throw the freaking 49ers in there somewhere. But I, I just don't fear them because of, cause of one man, Jimmy Garoppolo. I do not believe in him one bit. Jimmy G had a lot of open shots in the Seahawks game, and he was just missing. Yeah, he's not. I mean, their defense is elite, and I will give them that. Uh, but Jimmy G cannot win them games. I do not believe in the man. Um, so yeah, so we both got 49ers there. Next game, Patriots at Eagles. If this was 2017, this would be my game of the week, but I do not think that the Eagles are going to come close to beating the Patriots. Patriots uh, coming off a bye week, coming off a loss, they're going to want to win. Think, I think Belichick's going to go out there and prove that the Patriots are not to be tried. Yeah, people forget about them because they lost to the Ravens so, you know, so bad. And pe- people are forgetting about that Patriots defense, and I think they're going to – and Tom Brady's going to expose that secondary that's been trash all year. Julian Edelman's going to have a big game. If the Ravens and the Patriots play again, I think the Ravens will not win. I no. think Belichick – Yep, I That agree. entire game, if you watched him, he was taking notes the entire game. Well, that's – yeah, that's I, th- I think that's what Cowherd was saying. If the – the the Patriots, if they can get a look at you in the regular season, they'll beat you in the postseason. That's all, oh. and 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 they get to play the only people in the AFC that will that will threaten them in the playoffs. They get to play the they played the Chiefs already. I think did they play them or do they play them coming up? No, they play them coming up. So yeah, they get to play the Chiefs. They pl- did, did they play the Texans already? God, I can't remember anything. I know I they. Don't so. I, I don't no. think so. So they play the Texans, the Chiefs, the Ravens, and that's it. Those are the only three teams in the AFC. That can that can compete with them, for yeah. you know that can beat them, and they're going to play them all in the regular season. So they get a look at them, they get game film, you know. And once once Belichick gets game film, it's over. So I've it learned is. I've learned not to bet on the Patriots. I don't think I've picked the Patriots to lose at all this season because I just don't bet against them. It's just a bad idea. So I'm going with the Patriots. So are you? Next game. Patriots, yeah. This this is what will answer your question. Bengals at Raiders. The Raiders. John Gruden's Raiders are fun to watch this year, aren't they? I mean, they are. It's definitely a step up than were last year. They took a fat L to the Vikings by about twenty-eight points, but then after that, they said, "You know what? Let's figure it out." And they've been on a tear since then. Uh, I think they're five and four, or either five and five or five and four. I can't remember. Uh, but they're 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 winning a lot of games and they're winning it good. And and Derek um, Derek Carr is having a great year. And Gruden's plan is starting to look good. You know, Josh Jacobs is clearly the uh, the uh, yeah. offensive player of the or I mean, offensive rookie of the year. Clearly, uh, that was the trade for Khalil Mack. That was the pick that they it got. It was. It was. Yeah. And look at the Bears. Look how good. Would you rather be on the Raiders right now or the Bears? So, uh, John Gruden sitting at home with his hundred million dollar contract, laughing at all of us because the plan is coming together very well for him. Uh, and I'm picking the Raiders to beat the Bengals. I will say the Bengals are will not win a game for the rest of the year. You heard it here first. They will have the number one overall pick. And they will probably draft someone wrong and still be bad next year and the next it's, year. But it has to happen. A.J. Green, get the hell out of there. Joe Mixon, get the hell out of there. I hate seeing good players on bad teams. Get them out of and, there. And you know what sucks? You know, the best college player has to go to the Bengals. That's it. You, just, you just hate <laughs> to see it. You hate like, yeah, you do hate to see it, but it's same. But it depends on who it is. Sometimes you'll love to see it. You know, if Trevor Lawrence goes to a bad team and they suck. You'll love to see it. You would, you would. Uh, so you're going Raiders here as well. Raiders, yeah. There you go. Uh, next game, Bears at Rams. Both teams that had playoff hopes, and I think the Raiders or the Raiders, the Rams still have playoff hopes, but just not playing as well up to their potential as they, as people thought they would. A lot of people had the Bears going to the Super Bowl, so that's a big L for them. Uh, yeah. Mitch Trubisky is just garbage. I think they got to get rid of him. 
but he I can't talk shit because he's had the Vikings numbers. He has not lost to the Vikings since he's been in the league, which makes me so mad. Chase Daniel beat us the week two when we played them. Uh, we hurt we hurt Mitch Trubisky on the first drive, and then Chase Daniel carved our defense. So I was pretty pissed about that. I do think if we see him again, which we will, and in in Minnesota, uh, you know, week sixteen or seventeen, we will beat them uh, very easily. I'm going with the Rams here. Uh, I think Jared Goff is playing terribly. I think he's he's more not worth his contract than people are saying with Kirk Cousins. So, I mean, the man got a $100 million contract. He's having one of the worst years. I think Sean McVay has been exposed. Uh, I think people wanted to crown him too early on being the next Bill Belichick. But he seems to be sticking to one game plan and not changing. And people are figuring him out very quickly. So, but I'm going with the Rams here because the Bears suck. <laughs> Well, I'm going with the Bears. Here. Ooh. Yup. This is this is my my other upset right here. With okay. The Bears. I have the Bears winning. I think Jared Goff is an L boy. <laughs> so is Sean, Mitch. Sean McVay L as well. I think after Bill Belichick exposed him in the Super Bowl, uh, he hasn't been the same. They got arthritis legs out there on a big contract. Jared Goff on a big contract. They wasted their money. Did Did Todd Gurley not finesse them? He probably knew he was gonna be he was gonna be trash and was like, "All right, let me get my money now." You know. He want to know what happened was this is an inside scoop right here. Ooh. Todd Gurley called up Brock Osweiler and he was like, <laughs> "And Osweiler was like, boy, you got arthritis in the knees. Don't tell him. Don't tell get him your money." Then tell him. Get your money and then go get treatment and say you need to load manage like freaking Kawhi Leonard. <laughs> Big load management guy. All right, Bears. Uh, you know, I think the Bears are surprised this, this week and beat the Rams. How many touchdown passes is Mitch Trubisky going to throw in the game? He's going to throw two. Oh. One to Allen Robinson. Shout out to him. Because he's on your flex. Yeah, I know. That Bears defense, I think, is be too much for Jared Goff to handle. I think Jared Goff cannot play well against a good defense. Yeah, he he has been an L boy when it comes to stuff like that. And the I last last game and the last game we got Chiefs at Chargers. Uh this could potentially be a trap game for the Chiefs. Chargers are playing good as of late. Uh Philip Rivers, you know, is a gunslinger. He's gonna go out there and give it everything he's got. Melvin Gordon finally looking like a viable fantasy player. Uh Austin Eckler's still producing here and there. I'm glad I traded him though in the long run. <laughs> Uh, I'm yeah. going with the Chiefs here. Patrick Mahomes is playing lights out. He's he's everything you want in a quarterback and more. I'm mad that he didn't play against the Vikings because we lost to a damn freaking Matt Moore. Matty Moore. The real Matty Ice. The guy who was a freaking high school quarterback coach a year ago. Sucks. Hate to see it. Hate to see it. But I'm going with the Chiefs here. Patrick Mahomes, I think they, they win very easily against the Chargers because Chargers don't have home field advantage. I'm going big game for Patty Mahomes. At least one touchdown to Travis Kelsey. It's going to be a blowout. I think, I I hate to say it, I think Phillip Rivers, I think his time to come to an end. Ooh. I didn't I, see I, I didn't see the, the Chargers on that list of Kaepernick workout teams. <laughs> you know, I don't so think the Chargers would go that route. They might need somebody else. Anymore. They should go back to San Diego. They should have never left. If they would have stayed there, their team would have the opposite record they have right now. Yeah. I, <sighs> Chargers are an L. Chargers are a huge L for, for wasting all that talent. I think they – I mean, they're still in the playoff hunt. I just don't think they'd be able to do anything if they ever got there. So no. The Chargers last year were a force to be reckoned with, though. For they sure. They were a scary team last year. I ain't going to lie. They were very scary. I think uh, the Vikings do play the Chargers – sometime in the future so hopefully my comments don't come back to bite me but we'll see hey dom i want to play you a an audio message to close out is that okay that's fine all right here it is you already know that henny is here <laughs> I saw that and I saw that on my phone and I couldn't help it. I I was hoping you were gonna say Hanny Things Possible. Can we get a Hanny Things Possible right now? I want to all the viewers out here, I just gotta tell you guys one thing. <laughs> one thing in life that's always true. Anything is possible. Always follow your dreams. <laughs> you go out you wanna go out there and be the very best. You gotta catch them all. Dude, you 
You want to be the very best like I ever was. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta catch them all. Drink the henny. Anything's possible on the henny. Well, Dom, thanks for coming on, man. This has been a legendary podcast. This has been a legendary episode. Been wanting to get you on for a while. I needed to get your pro knowledge on the, on the Pokemon Sword and Shield. What a glorious day to do this podcast on. On uh, on the release date, dude. On the release date, but ugh, too bad it got overshadowed by fucking Miles Garrett. Can't believe you'd do such a thing to overtake Pokemon. To overtake to Pokemon. Pokemon. Today, Nobody's talking about that. <laughs> Everyone's talking about how much of the head about Miles Garrett. Nobody's talking about Sword and Shield. No respect out here. When I went and bought it, I was surprised that they had it. I was like, hey, do you guys have Sword and Shield? They're like, yeah, which one do you want? I was like, oh, bitch, Shield. And they were all like, ugh, why? I was like, come on, can't be basic. Can't be that sword life. They're I like, will say it, Sword or Shield, the ponytail looks pretty neat on Shield, so that'd be a good, good to get. Yeah, we're going to have to trade. I'll catch a couple ponytails and I'll trade it to you for sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, last thing, I'll, I want to ask you one more, one more thing. Uh, are you going to get Disney Plus or did you already get it? I have not gotten it yet and the jury saw it if I'll get it or not. It's only $7 a month, I heard. Is it? Yeah, and you get... Know, but if it's 7 a month, then your boy is going to have to get it. Yeah, because it has all the Marvel movies on there. Uh, also also old Disney shows, obviously, but like all the Marvel movies that aren't on Netflix are on there. So Endgame's on there with all the bonuses and I keep seeing all these deleted clips of like Iron Man in the soul realm and stuff. It's crazy. Yeah. So I think it's going to be worth it. And then obviously when like all the Marvel, like what if stuff comes out and all like next year, all the Disney plus, like, I think if anything, I might wait until that stuff comes out to buy it. Cause That's I don't, what I, was, dude, I, I was probably going to wait for the low key series. I think yeah, the that... series going to be big. I'm not really looking forward to the new Captain America and Bucky and they, you can't replace Bucky Captain and the America. Bucky and the winter soldier or no, what is it back? Bucky and it's, it's Falcon and Bucky Falcon and, and Bucky. Fault, and I think, and, and I think I've told great. you this before, but for everybody that doesn't know with what happened at the end of Endgame, when when Captain America gives Falcon his shield, does that now make him Captain Falcon? Falcon Punch, dude. Is he <laughs> is he going to be Falcon punching people in this new series? That's what I want to know. Because if he is... If he, if, if he does one, he'll gain my respect back, and then I'll actually watch the show. <laughs> well, all right, Dom. Thanks for coming on, though. This has been awesome. We'll have to get you back on, obviously, again. like this is This has been so much fun. I, I never I never not have fun doing these things. Uh but thanks for coming on, man, for sure. Thanks for having me, Mason. I've been looking forward to doing this a long time. Alright, man. Keep on keeping on. We'll be we'll be in contact and uh I'm gonna go catch them all right now. Alright, enjoy, man. See you, Dom. Peace out. And that was Dom Cisneros. Thank you, Dom, again for coming on. Uh thank you guys for listening though. I'm gonna get out of here. I got a shower, I gotta make some dinner. I got to play Pokemon sword, obviously Pokemon shield. I mean, uh, so thank you guys for listening. Tune in next week, tune in every week. Uh, and don't forget to figure it out.